Yo, welcome back to the BST4 channel. Wingless, what's going on? What's happening? Man, we're not talking about this car today. We're going to do something before we get into the video, which is put an engine into an Audi. This one right here, got the cardboard, not cardboard, but we got some plywood in there. He's gonna go ahead and reverse it back. And then, you know, I'm gonna tell him to stop in a few minutes, but he just gotta get it close enough. We're gonna put that 302 in there. But we're gonna do a little bit of that stuff behind the scenes, finagling with that goddamn strap. Still amazing. Still crazy. I was telling people about this, people did not believe me. Really? No, no. Until I showed them the picture, they didn't believe me. I, I'm still tripping over this. Look at it. You can't even tell that the engine's in the back of it, man. Crazy, man. So, so crazy. I know what you guys are thinking. That was a clean-ass Audi that he threw that 302 inside it. I told you I wasn't bullcrapping you guys. That joker put that thing in there. He made me a believer that anything is possible. You just got to work at it, figure it out, and it'll work. Just like with this electric power steering pump that we took out of the Volvo yesterday. Now, this here is a great item to have. Now, if you have a swap of any kind that, that's dealing with limited amount of space or you want the maximum horsepower, every little oomph, this will do the trick for you. Now, if you have a Coyote swap inside of your Crown Victoria, this is the item to get. Trust and believe me, when you get this item here, you ain't gotta worry about nothing but wiring up and just, you know, finding a place for it and everything like that. Now, the wiring up is pretty fairly easy. You got positive and negative, right? And then you have a remote wire. Guys who hooked up systems, you remember that, that remote wire that comes out of your radio and it kind of connected to your amp or your antenna or whatever? And that's where you'll hook up the off and on switch. Now, when you hook up the off and on switch to it, there will be a slight delay in this item. It won't turn on right away. And then it'll kick in. Because I think that this thing has relays in it. You see all the electrical stuff in here? It has a built-in relay. So you're good. So what you need to do is 40 amp fuse or breaker on this and you'll be good. Now, on this side here, this is the return. And this here is um, the power side. Now this is 14 millimeter by 1.5. That's what you're gonna need. So you will get an, an and fitting, six and, don't get no 8 and like my dumb behind did with this daggone Maverick. And this is your rack that you're going to be using inside of your Crown Victoria. We're speaking to the Crown Vic guys. You guys who got other cars, y'all got to figure it out. All right, now with this item here, with this uh, Crown Vic rack, we have a certain situation that's quite different than most cars. Now, these lines here are just regular lines for left and right and everything like that. But let me take off this for a moment and show you what you need to do. They have a fitting for this. And we have to thank the guys who do um, front end Crown Vic swaps on the F-150s because they have a fitting that goes in here and connects. You probably see it on the screen right now. And you need to get that with six end fittings. But you gotta make sure when you go inside your car, you gotta make sure if it's a 90 degree, 45 degree, you gotta figure that all that out. I haven't gotten to that point yet, so we really don't know. Here's a video by Guy Streets to Screw, something like that on YouTube, and explaining it on this Coyote Swap. Please subscribe to his channel. He only has 95 subscribers. This is ridiculous. Show him some respect and some love, brothers. It's like, I think Power by the Hour makes all kinds of swap parts for these. And it was like 300 bucks or something to put a hydraulic power steering pump on this motor. And I've killed like six of those. I don't know if it's the high RPMs that does it. And then I found this on the internet and it's three wires, power ground, 12 volt signal, plummet to the rack with a return line. And I got that one for 30 bucks at a junkyard. So now it's, I mean, it feels all right. It feels almost normal. Just run it. And then that's it. That's really, really it. There's nothing really special. There's really nothing else that you need to do. Like I said, you could just check it out. It's quite different than, you know, the average cars out there. So you'll definitely be, be good. Now, let me see if we can go over here. I do have a Crown Vic front end sitting over here. 
those um these two lines is over here. It looked like a 90 degree and one is in some funky 45 degree to something to something. It'll work out. You just gotta figure out and look underneath on your engine and see what is what. So again, it's quite possible to get that done on your um Crown Victoria. Now, oh let's see what we're doing with this uh here. Alright. For the guys who want to know more about the Maverick. Alright, here is here's the deal with the Maverick. So this right here, we took this out of the we call it what was the thing we took it out of? we took it out of that f-150 that I took the rear out I was eyeing up this tank that was sitting in the back and we took this tank out and then after that I started to do um uh 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 uh, uh what do you call it what was it, what I was doing I was doing the fuel pump so let me uh take this out and I'll show you the fuel pump that I mounted up inside this thing here all right so you guys can see right here hooked up the pump here um, it was a straight line it didn't have a pump on here it was just a basically a, a, like a return sump type thing this is like the second tank so the second tank don't have any um, don't have a whole a, a fuel pump it does have a sending unit which is um, I ripped that off that's for basically regulating knowing how much you have in the fuel tank in the second tank so this is what I rigged up and I'll hook this up and this is what I'm going to use. So that's what I put inside of it. And, you know, this was holding me up for a little bit. And let me put this all back together. So we got this thing back on. <laughs> Finally. So this is um, like a return or this is nothing. Right. I'm just going to butt this up. You know, trust, I'm trying to make it look cool. But I need a piece for here. Same piece like here. See, as I'm talking to you guys. I'll be buying parts, little tiny stuff, because I want to get the right stuff. And I'm still debating on that part that I was telling you on the car over there in the other video. Shoot, I may just buy uh, this thing right here. Just take this off, get the right one, and don't have too many, you know, situations on it. I, I'm debating right now, just trying to figure this out. So, so back to this thing here, man. All you need to do is to make this thing work is this pressure side, 14 millimeter by 1.5, and then you start to wire this stuff up, positive, negative, um, a 40 amp breaker on the positive side, and hook a switch on the, one of these three wires. Don't know which one it is, but one of them. Test them out, figure it out. One of these three wires, and that'll be a switch to that. Turn it off and on. You hook up your pressure line somewhere over here, you go get them two items right there. That costs around 60 bucks. Pump cost me 25 bucks. But if you go on eBay and everything, the pump would be $89, $150, $160. So $160, right? And then you go get this part here and some other stuff and have a nice, pretty decent setup. Now, if you want to go get the um, regular power steering pump on your Coyote, it's going to cost you 300 and something dollars for the kit unless you can finagle something and that pump will burn out guaranteed this is a better hit a better deal a better item so i'm still debating on putting that pump inside here so i can get a, a little extra ponies plus i want to do something different we could probably sneak it over there and everything and um that might be the move you know we could just actually put the pump somewhere right around there and then take out and have the belt shorter and we could probably do that and maybe we'll make a video on that very soon probably or show you the theory on how this fan works first we got to go ahead and uh turn this thing on here got to even show you guys this stuff here all right hit a fan going now here's my theory it does work um you know, can't keep a leaf on there in certain areas. So it does work, it's hovering. So with that theory there, air comes in here, this fan blows this fan, and this fan will blow it outward through the nostrils or the back. Air moving from the car moving, blah, blah, blah. Hopefully the, air, the hot air will escape a little bit more faster. Maybe 2%, maybe 3%, whatever, it's a percent. That's basically how it was, or that's basically how the theory is. 
So, um, another video, I'm gonna run it hot and see how it works. I don't think it works real well in a real hum humid situation. I still think I need that air to water in a cooler type deal that you guys are talking about. Probably need to do that. I've seen one that kind of looks like this. So I'll be probably getting that and running some cooling lines with a um, cooling tank in the, in the back. So it's good, man. I mean, you see, it's doing something. So this definitely will work. And I had um, starting problems with it too. This blew off because this um, thing here got stripped and then I put two bolts underneath there and kind of just get it to going. But now it starts up pretty daggone well. Before it was like a little bit of, you know, it was mumbling and jumbling. I got too many goddamn keys like I own a car lot. So um, right now it's, it's legit. So, thank you guys for watching this episode of Bill Sub TV, man. And I'll see you guys on the next video where we'll be um, driving this for a while. Because I'm going to get the car nice and warmed up and see what's going on. I put me a nice, I put some gas in there. How much gas I got in there? Uh, that's a good amount. That'll work. Um, also, what I noticed too, um, I put 93, it don't run good on 93 with the turbo, with no tune. I had to put 89 in there. Now, it runs a lot better, which is very odd, but um, that's what's going on. So, we'll see you guys on the next. Let's turn this thing off, turn this thing off, and uh, let's go order some parts, man.